States. Let's go to Congressman uh, Mike McCall of Texas. Sits on the Foreign Affairs Committee, very important player on this. Had a, a chance to, to hear President Zelensky today. Uh, Congressman, always great for you to take the time. I appreciate that. Um, Thanks, President Neil. Zelensky was making it clear, Isabel, what he really, really wants. And I'm sure he's very grateful for this $800 billion plus in other crucial military aid. But he didn't get the grand prize that he really wanted, that is, that air support. And it doesn't look, at least from President Biden, that he will. Do you think that is a mistake? Do you personally think it's a mistake? Well, I think symbolically giving him the mix. The original plan, I was over in Poland, was to have uh, Ukrainian pilots go into Poland and fly the MiGs. And uh, there, it's a very complicated issue, a uh, little bit of division between Department of Defense and state on this. And then it ended up with them offering to send them to Ramstein Air Base in Germany. So it unfortunately got botched. And I think symbolically that would have meant a lot. But what I can tell you is with the new aid package, sending lethal drones, uh, anti-aircraft uh, missile systems uh, like the S-300, working with our allies to get those in theater, uh, that can, in essence, provide a no-fly zone for uh, President Zelensky. And, and I must say, one of the most compelling uh, moments, I've, I've been in Congress for nine terms, but to hear sort of the Churchill of our times talk about this very uh, issue and the video that they showed of what Ukraine looked like before the invasion and what the bombing has done. Now, history will judge this moment and it will ask the question, what did you do uh, to stop this? Congressman, uh, uh, do you think Vladimir Putin is a war criminal? <clears throat> oh, 100%. I, I, look, he's already crossed the line with uh, Geneva Convention killing innocent uh, civilians. I'm glad the president did say that. I'm glad you had good reporters to ask him that. Uh, but he, you know, targeting a maternal hospital. And that was after he also targeted a children's hospital, cancer hospital in Kiev, uh, and then hitting, uh, you know, civilians in a bread line, for God's sakes. This man is a war criminal. And if he uses chemical weapons, which could be likely here, or short-range uh, tactical nukes. Uh, he's really crossing the line. And I think that should be a red line that we should tell him. If you cross that line, it's a red line. Um, and I believe, and I think our committee will have you know, this resolution to take it to the General Assembly to indict this man for war crimes. Congressman, um, we're getting dribs and drabs out of these so-called peace talks. I say so-called because you know, they, they offer analyzing positive developments and then they never come to fruition, including a humanitarian pathway and all that that the Russians ignore. But the latest, at least, signal from Russia coming from its foreign minister uh, is that it's open to a neutral Ukraine. Uh, and I guess by extension, the existing government still in place, which would presumably include President Zelensky and the entire parliament, but that it would have to be neutral uh, and that it could never mm -hmm. entertain NATO membership. Now, this has been hinted at before. They seem to be fine tuning it now. Um, what do you make of it? Well, first of all, I think Putin was told by his military advisors, as we were told, that this would be over in three to four days. Putin is very frustrated uh, with the advice he got regarding his military that you know, they're not getting the job done. And now he's doubling down. So these negotiations, I would say, are not going all that well, but that is one of the concessions they would like to see as a neutral Ukraine to pledge never to join NATO. But they would also want like a lease on Crimea. They want the Donbass region and that's to have right. no exactly militarization right. in Ukraine. And these are, that's really up to President Zelensky, but I'm not, I don't think Zelensky is willing to accept that price. Right. He has already come out and said a number of times, Congressman, uh, that the NATO thing isn't the end all and be all. I'm paraphrasing here, but he characterized that's, that's frustration true. with trying to join that NATO from uh, dealing with that with fellow NATO members in the past who, who didn't want to offer him that. Um, now they're eager to, but it, 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 it sounds like he is throwing that out there in an olive branch effort. A waste of time, you think, or, or what? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think... Uh, 
I think that was done by design to get negotiate. I think the goal here is not to escalate. We don't want World War III. That's why the no-fly zone would escalate this, where NATO air power would be clashing with Russian jets. Uh, and I think the goal is, is to wear down the Russians as they are doing. I so impressive what the Ukrainians are doing against this almighty you know Russian force, which we're finding is not all that capable. And to wear them down and not escalate and get them to a negotiation to resolve this. But it's going to be difficult for Zelensky to give away, you know, a lot of his territory after what Putin has done, particularly to his uh, civilian population. Congressman McCall, thank you very much. Good seeing you again. Now, thanks, Neil. Thanks for having me. All right.